Welcome to KBW News at 5 o'clock as we begin week five of the governor's stay home, save lives order. I hope you had a good weekend. To honor beloved Oregon author Beverly Cleary's 104th birthday last week, I decided to run by the sculpture garden that honors her in Northeast Portland's Grant Park. And I saw that one of our favorite Cleary characters, Ramona Quimby, had donned a face mask. That was Saturday. And then when I ran by yesterday, look, Henry Huggins had joined her. Another reminder, we are all connected and all in this together. Thank you for joining us as we journey through this pandemic together. Now to today's developments this Monday, April 20th. One of the key things Governor Kate Brown says we need before opening up the economy again is more testing. She and the state epidemiologist said 15,000 tests a week would be about right. So we wondered, where are we now? Pat Doris dug into the numbers. Since the pandemic invaded Oregon, a lack of testing has been a constant problem. It seems there never have been enough tests for people to confirm they have the virus. Just last week, Governor Brown said there are roughly 9,000 tests a week happening in Oregon, and the state epidemiologist said that number has to grow. We do anticipate, you know, up to around 15,000 tests a week would what is what we would need ongoing. That's a rough estimate. While they're estimating, state leaders might want to estimate the total number of tests that are available now, because it very likely is more than 15,000 a week. The big health systems went full out to ramp up their testing. Dr. Nick Cashy is with Legacy Health. How hard was it to get your capacity up to where it is now? There's been a lot of work involved. It's really been a, a staged process. Uh, I, again, you know, we started a couple of weeks ago with a handful of tests that we had to send out of state. Um, and since then, our lab uh, has been really hard at work at developing an in-house test capability. Take a look at the numbers. Two weeks ago, the Oregon Health Authority reported that nearly 10,000 people got tests. I checked with Legacy Health and found they have an unused capacity of an extra 3,300 tests a week, and Providence Health has unused capacity of 2,100 a week. Add just those numbers together and you'll find it totals over 15,000 a week. But wait, there's more. Oregon Health Sciences University also has a significant ability to test now. Here's Dr. Donna Hansel. Uh, we have about 800 tests available per day maximum. We've been running between three to 400 a day. Which means they have about 2,800 tests a week that are going unused. That brings the weekly capacity to over 18,000 tests in Oregon. But wait, there is still more, including the giant private labs Quest and LabCorp. The last couple of weeks have seen significant pressure on the lack of tests in Oregon, but it appears at least for now the capacity is more than enough for the goal set out by state leaders. It's been exhausting behind the scenes, but worth it. You know, everyone who really came together on this had the community, our patients, the state health um, of the population in mind, and it feels really good. And I know everyone is, is doing this because they, they really care. So, to the question of whether Oregon has enough testing capacity for 15,000 tests a week, the answer is a resounding yes. That was Pat Doris reporting, and those numbers beg the question, why aren't we using more of these tests if there are plenty available? One doctor said he thinks people believe the tests are hard to get, so they don't ask. We were also told only a certain number of people get sick enough each day to demand a test, and so a lot of tests are not being used. We continue to hear from people having trouble filing unemployment claims. Last week, the Oregon Employment Department said the state's antiquated computer systems have been part of the problem. Sunday morning, we received multiple emails from people who said when they went to file their weekly claim, they were told they had to start over. That restart claim error has now happened two weeks in a row. It's since been fixed, but others say they can't get through to anyone on the phone for help with other issues. Can't get through on either. They just rang and rang and rang, and the local one usually just says the circuits are busy. And you can try it all day long. Hundreds of calls. I mean, it's just every day. The employment department said it knows getting through by phone has been difficult, but said once someone does get through, they will still get benefits for the weeks they were not able to file. They said people can also try emailing. Now here is the email address, OED underscore COVID-19 
underscore info at Oregon.gov. You can email that for help. They also hired hundreds of people to take claims and are adding more this week. Eligibility is opening up for thousands of people who didn't previously qualify for unemployment insurance. The Federal CARES Act is now allowing payments to those who classify as independent contractors. Washington State did a couple of things to prepare for this new wave of applications. Its website went offline most of the day Saturday for updates, and the department has also hired hundreds of call center employees to help handle requests. Across the country, people are protesting statewide stay-at-home orders. This was on the Capitol steps in Olympia yesterday. Some claim the government has gone too far with restrictions, and they want to get back to work. Similar protests have been held across the country, and groups in Oregon are planning protests next month. You may have seen photos or video from this protest in Denver, where protesters confronted health care workers. A nurse in full scrub silently stood in front of a woman screaming at him from her pickup truck. Pictures from this protest have been shared thousands of times on social media. That nurse was one of a few who tried to counteract the protest yesterday, which hundreds attended. The Oregon National Guard will distribute about 395,000 personal protective equipment items to long-term care centers across the state. Governor Brown announced the update this morning. That equipment includes about 177,000 surgical masks, 127,000 pairs of gloves, and 33,000 face shields. Like many other states, health care workers on the front lines of this pandemic have faced a shortage of PPE. Corvallis is the first city in the country where researchers are randomly testing people for COVID-19. The goal is to find people carrying the virus who don't have any symptoms. Oregon State University researchers are leading this project, and yesterday they sent out volunteers to go door to door and ask people if they would take the test. Those who say yes will get a kit to do their own nasal swab, which will be sent to a lab. They get the results in the mail after seven to 10 days. This project is gonna provide useful information. I think that we talked about earlier, that's missing. We don't know the prevalence of, of, uh, of the virus in people who are not showing symptoms. And that's really our goal. In all, 4,000 Corvallis residents will be tested over several weeks. Ever since the coronavirus crisis shut so many things down, access to fresh water for people who are homeless has been harder to come by. Devin Haskins shows us how a local homeless nonprofit is helping those living on the streets stay hydrated. For those living on the streets, finding that drink of water can be hard. Many rely on the local coffee shop or a public building's water fountain or even the Benson bubblers. Blanche House saw a need once everything shut down and decided to take action. And we thought, well, if we could get water bottles, then we could fill water bottles uh, for people that we're serving meals to and hand those out. Three times a day during the regular meal handouts, they hand out a full water bottle along with coffee or lemonade. They'll also refill the water bottles that are brought back. Hydration and good hygiene is going to be critical to their public and mental, uh, to their to their physical health and to their mental health and well-being. Um, I think some other people just wanted to help. The idea really kicked off generous. a week ago. Yeah. Someone close to Blanche yeah. House yeah. reached yeah. out to yeah. Jonathan yeah. Moss, who runs the Bike Portland blog. Moss wrote about Blanche's need in a recent post last week, and his readers responded. But people that ride bicycles regularly around Portland have a different perspective, and I think a lot of them have sort of a deeper appreciation for a lot of these urban issues that we face, uh, one of them being people living right next to the path where they're riding right next to the shoulder. Cyclists not only kicked in some, but bike businesses and manufacturers around the city donated box loads of them to the Blanche House this past week. I bet we've received well over a thousand bottles already. And the cycling community wasn't the only one donating. Today, during lunch at the Blanche House, people got bottles donated by Gatorade and the Portland Trailblazers. We know that this is something that we'll do as long as this crisis persists and people are forced to live outdoors 24-7. Uh, we want to make sure that we can keep them hydrated. In Portland, Devin Haskins, KGW News. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled today a jury's decision must be unanimous to convict someone of serious crimes. This decision has a big impact here in Oregon, the only state that allows split juries. There is widespread agreement among defense lawyers and prosecutors in Oregon that our law was deeply flawed and may have sent innocent people to prison. 
The ruling will immediately affect all cases going forward, including defendants whose appeals are still working their way through the courts. What is not clear, what will happen to thousands of old cases where defendants were convicted by a split jury? So for people who were previously convicted and their cases closed, they'll now have to go back to court and seek to reopen their cases. And it's not a settled question whether a Supreme Court decision like this applies retroactively. You would think it would, but usually it doesn't. The Oregon law approved in 1934 had its roots in racial prejudice by allowing white jurors to make the votes of a few minorities meaningless. Oregon's Attorney General, along with prosecutors and defense lawyers today, all praise the Supreme Court decision banning non-unanimous verdicts. A bit of a wild chase this morning in Happy Valley when a deputy tried to pull over a Dodge Charger. The driver sped off. Officials think he was driving more than 100 miles per hour trying to get away from police. Deputies eventually found the Charger, crashed in between a truck pulling a trailer full of gravel and an SUV. The drivers of both those vehicles had to be taken to the hospital. Meanwhile, the suspect crawled out the broken back window, then tried to escape. But bystanders at a Fred Meyer fuel station helped detain him until the deputies got there. The suspect, you're looking at him, Sam Hankos, had a warrant out for his arrest and now faces several more charges.